Civil unrest comes for Justin Trudeau, even at a time when the CBC, of all places, is willing to criticize him. Let's get into it. Oh, yeah! What's going on, ladies and gentlemen? Welcome back to The Fringe. We have been talking all week, it seems, about this carbon tax increase. And Justin Trudeau, of course, we've seen him getting uh, drowned out by noise during press conferences. We've seen premiers criticizing and asking for him to repeal his crazy 23% carbon tax hike on the population, which is, again, cutting into people's food, people's gasoline costs to get to work. It's going to reflect everything they buy, everything they do, their utility bills. The, the list goes on and on. But today, and I'm going to have another premier who's really taken a chunk out of Justin Trudeau, so stick around for that. Uh, we have, of all organizations, all outfits, the CBC giving Justin Trudeau a hard time and completely destroying him over the radio. Now, uh, we're going to get into that, so stick around. But before we get into that, I just want to remind everybody that we're on our way to hitting 30,000 subscribers here on the channel. We're very close, so if you're enjoying this content, please make sure to click that subscribe button. Join us in our large fringe majority here on the channel, and turn on your bell for notifications to come back and join us for all of our videos that drop. Make sure to leave a thumbs up or a comment on the video. It tells everyone that you like this content and helps us to get out there in the algorithm so other people who aren't aware that we do these videos can find Find them. Also join me tonight for our live stream Friday Night Fringe at 6 p.m. Pacific, 8 p.m. Central here on the channel, where we're going to go over things like this and also a little bit of what's coming up in the next week and some back and forth with the community. I look forward to seeing you all there. And with that, let's get into Justin Trudeau and a good old Friday laugh for you guys, because boy, the CBC, I don't like giving them credit ever. And I'm not going to give them credit on this one because this is a once in a lifetime. This is like catching Haley's Comet. Okay, this is, this is, you haven't seen this before, but of course, a shadow watcher tweeting out that the CBC's Matt Galloway interview with Justin Trudeau doesn't go well for Justin. His dumpster fire of a cross Canada tour continues. The CBC was his last hope. Won't agree he's lost the CT narrative. Uh, won't take a premier's meeting. It won't take responsibility for the dumpster fire he created. Let's take a listen because they don't let up. Uh, this, uh, this Matt Galloway, he doesn't let up on this. Let's go. Do you think you've made that case? Uh, I think we're continuing to make that case. It's understandable that at a time of anxiety, of pressure on costs, of affordability concerns, uh, that some politicians are trying to you know, drum up support for themselves by scaring people and by giving misinformation. It's unfortunate, but we're going to continue telling the truth. So just to be clear, you don't think you've lost the narrative on this. We had a conversation this week with somebody who's a defender of the carbon tax. He explained it. He talked it, about it as a dumpster fire in terms of how it's rolled out. You don't think you've lost the narrative. It's not just conservative premiers, though. It's Wab Canoe in um, Manitoba, it's a fellow liberal in Andrew Fury in Newfoundland and Labrador. What would it take for them to convince you that this is not the right policy? Well, they have the opportunity to put forward a pricing frame that makes sure that pollution isn't free at the same level for the rest of the country, but in a way that works for their province if they don't want to have the federal backstop. So Andrew Fury has said that he wants a meeting with you to talk about this. He wants the premiers to come together with you. Will you have that meeting? I've, I had a meeting in 2016 will with you all have premiers the, Will you have the meeting this. now with I will continue to talk with premiers, but I will continue. One of the reasons why there's great anxiety over this is because, as you've said, there are a lot of people who feel like the system is stacked against them. Young people in particular they do everything they can. They get a good job. They're working hard. They can't square that circle. You've had nine years in power. To what extent is your government responsible for the fact that that system is stacked against them? Uh, we got elected in, in 2015 focused on supporting the middle class. And we brought in a number of measures that made a huge difference. We cut child poverty in half in this country with the Canada Child Benefit. But particularly since the, uh, the pandemic, we've seen so he goes into the pandemic, and again, um, we don't have the rest of that clip. Um, but for purposes of commenting here, you'll notice that, again, it's the blame game with Justin Trudeau. It's always somebody else. He says, we cut child poverty in half. Well, if that was the case, why did he just announce a $1 billion initiative for kids to get lunch going to school? Because, well, let's be honest, parents can't afford to give kids their lunch. They can't afford to send their kids to school with anything in their lunch boxes simply because Justin Trudeau has priced them out of the market. Um 
you'll notice that when he asks, you know, does it fall to the premiers? Are you going to sit with Fury? Are you going to sit with other premiers? Well, I had a meeting in 2016. Um, that was almost eight years ago. In fact, by the time that, that, that anniversary rolls around, it will be eight years this year that that meeting was held. So why wouldn't you sit down and listen to premiers? A lot can change in eight years. Just ask Justin Trudeau. But of course, it didn't continue from there, as of course they asked him about what people think of him. Now, <laughs> I can answer that question real quick why people don't like him, but let's just hear what he has to say on his own thoughts as to why people don't like him. You're a factor in this, um, you personally. Mm. Why do you think people don't like you? <laughs> you know, I spend a lot of time talking with Canadians right across the country. I spent, I spent uh, time this morning uh, with, uh, with construction workers um, talking about the work that they were doing, building uh, new rental units for Canadians uh, here in Toronto. Um, I think there is a lot of frustration with the way the world is unfolding, and that frustration is being taken out on people in positions of power. Uh, I get that. That's part of my job. But my job is to stay focused on the solutions that people are going to need, and that's what we're doing. Well, what about you? I mean, we're both old enough to have seen a number of prime ministers, and I have never seen, I mean, the sticker that I saw yesterday in downtown Toronto running through the city with F. Trudeau on the back of a pickup truck, mm -hmm. flags with, with your name and the middle finger raised. Yeah. Why don't people like you? <laughs> there is a level of polarization and toxicity that we see in a very visible way on social media and also in real life, as you point out. But most Canadians remain thoughtful and open and decent and, yes, frustrated and worried about their future. But I also know Canadians are good people uh, who are willing uh, to, to, to work together to build that future, and I'm part of that. Oh... <laughs> Uh, he tries to he tries to play it uh, all nice about the flags, about everything going on. Listen, do you know why people don't like you, Justin Trudeau? Well, because you've ran this country into the ground. Again, people can't afford to live. People can't afford to do anything. In fact, one of his biggest advocators and suck-ups, Doug Ford, came out on April 2nd to give his thoughts about Justin Trudeau. And, uh, well, <laughs> I think I have a co-host joining me over here. Um, <laughs> let's, uh, let's get into what Doug Ford had to say about Justin Trudeau and his upcoming carbon tax. I'm here today. We're all here today to make it clear. We stand against the carbon tax because we know Ontario families deserve to keep more money and their hard earned money in their own pockets, not the government's because we know Ontario businesses can't afford more costly burden. And at a time when the cost of living has never been higher, leaders at every single level of government, they have a duty. They have a duty to do everything we can to keep costs down for the hardworking people of Ontario. That's why for months I've been urging the federal government to scrap the carbon tax. And I got to crack that. It hasn't been months. I've been chasing them for years on this thing. And pause yesterday's increase. Not everyone can say they've done the same. For weeks, as the carbon tax hike loomed, Bonnie Crombie has refused to stand against it. Instead, she's dodged questions and desperately tried to change the subject, all while refusing to stand up for taxpayers. In fact, just last week, when given the opportunity to vote against the carbon tax, every single one of Bonnie Crombie's Liberal MPPs sat on their hands and did absolutely nothing. We shouldn't be surprised. Bonnie Crombie is the queen of carbon tax. As a Liberal MP, she was one of the first people in, the, in Canada to support the carbon tax. She led the carbon tax charge when she was in Ottawa. As mayor, she raised property taxes every year she was in office, including last year, she gave the largest tax increase in Mississauga's history. And as a liberal leader, she refuses to stand up against the carbon tax. 
Again, Doug Ford making no qualms that he's had enough of the carbon tax. Again, he's speaking out in Mississauga against their former elected officials. Uh, but this is the, again, I, I was talking in an earlier video today about how this is the beginning of the end. This is where I'm saying people are starting to speak out more. People like Doug Ford, who used to pucker up to guys like Justin Trudeau, especially during the pandemic. And boy, Doug, uh, we're not going to forget that. Uh, but uh People now are starting to speak out. People are starting to have enough. People have said the writing is on the wall. And again, I said this when they made the vote in the House of Commons for Pierre's uh, non-confidence vote, where I said, you're witnessing a funeral of both of these other parties, whether it's the or multiple parties, whether it was the Liberals, NDPs, the Bloc, the Green Party, I don't care who they were. If they voted against non-confidence in Justin Trudeau's Canada, then they're obviously saying that they're all for taxing people to death. They're all for putting people in poverty. They're all for creating this mess that we're in. And who props him up more than anybody else? Well, Jugmeet Singh. Friend of the channel, the pleb tweets out with uh, confidence levels in Jagmeet Singh at all-time lows. I think it's time for the NDP to elect a new leader. Three of his MPs today declared they will not be seeking re-election. Uh, re it's over for this guy. And what I was about to say is it's a bit of a revelation. Because when it comes to Jagmeet Singh, while well, we've seen how when we follow the money, he talks about rich CEOs and he talks about Loblaws an awful lot. And that might be because his brother is tied to Metro Inc. as a lobbyist, which is in direct competition with Loblaws. So again, follow the money. Now, it's interesting that the pleb says three of the MPs declared today that they won't be running again. Well, that's because Justin Trudeau extended the election dates so that they can get their big fat pensions and walk away with Canadian taxpayer money. This is a huge mess and it shows you just how much things are breaking down for Justin Trudeau, especially Especially when the CBC of all places give a mic drop to Justin Trudeau and really don't pull back, or at least their host doesn't pull back in terms of criticism of this prime minister. And I think it's a day late, a dollar short when it comes to Pierre's stance on funding for the CBC, but I think it's over for all of them. I think this is the end of it for everybody. So let me know what you guys think down below in the comments. Let me know what you think about CBC pushing Trudeau so hard, because again, even though it wasn't overly hard, I still think it's leaps and bounds above what they've done in the past. Uh, give me your comments down below. Again, ladies and gentlemen, join me here tonight for Friday Night Fringe at 6 p.m. Pacific, 8 p.m. Central. It's going to be a great show. I'm looking forward to seeing you all there. We're going to have a lot to talk about this week, especially with all the protests going on. Uh, so join me live in the chat. It'll be great to see you there. I hope you guys enjoyed this video and have a great rest of your day. I'll catch you on the next one.